You know, when broadcasting technology moves forward, it's not nearly as smooth as the cars going over that bridge behind me. In fact, it usually moves forward in steps. Steps in quality, steps in the way programs are made, and steps in the way they're delivered. You know, the next step could be 1080p, 50, and 60, because high frame rate for sports production is very compelling. However, I think that 4K and even higher resolution imaging is going to become more important as well as this becomes a standard in cinema and will make its way into television. For us at Disney, we really feel that 4K is the next evolution in the resolution and the format. Now, it would be great if there was only one frame rate, uh, but realistically, it would probably be at least 24 or 25. A lot of higher frame rates are also appearing in the production area. We see 48, 60, and even 120 frames per second. So frame rate and resolution will probably be the next big step. Yes, from this point of view, I think that uh, the best compromise could be 1080p 50. That is not 4K, but uh, on the other hand, it is able uh, to supersede the problems that we have today with the interlaced uh, uh, 1080i 25 and uh, the uh, lower resolution at least for static image of 720p. Of course uh, this is uh, still a challenge from different point of view, from a technical point of view because of the bandwidth, from the point of view of the storage, but on the other hand the industry is putting on the market uh, a lot of equipment that are able to work with this format. Uh, the picture quality is astonishing, so I think that uh, for sure at least it is a candidate that we have to consider. But of course other people could have in mind also even more resolution or uh, more frame rate. Uh, NHK has conducted a number of human scientific researches to investigate the effects of uh, video parameters. And we confirmed that uh, a super high vision, uh, which is an 8K system, uh, can provide both sense of being there and sense of, of, sense of realness. Uh, on the other hand, 4K or 2K system can only be effective and a limited uh, viewing environment. So I believe that uh, next is a uh, super high vision <laughs> with 8K. So there are some steps ahead of us in picture quality, but what about program production methods themselves? Are there some mountains to climb here and are they as big as the ones behind me now? We can summarize the issues in production into two fields. The first field is certainly the transition to HDTV. This is an important matter for many of our members, still after many years. The second keyword which we can use is to increase the production efficiency by means of modern and digital workflows. The broadcasters have learned the hard way that they need to think about workflows. I think that's going to change and we're going to have to start thinking about services and service is the essence to moving to a cloud environment. Um, so we're going to have to think services, not workflow, think clouds, not um, production IT. However, we should not underestimate that whatever we do in this field has an impact to the creative staff as well as to the technicians. Yes, I think that's absolutely right and it's what we've discovered in our own change program moving over to network production. Um, two key lessons I think we learned is one, don't try to make too big a step with the change, do it incrementally, um, and secondly and probably most importantly involve the people themselves in those change. It's a task of the change management to enable us the acceptance of these new technologies in broadcasting organizations. So we've got some steps now in quality and in program production, but what about delivering it to the home? There must be some mountains to climb there too. Well, the current threat that we're facing is what is called the second digital dividend, which is to take away another slice of UHF spectrum that is to be devoted to mobile services only. Now, in principle, if we could argue saying that, well, leave the remaining UHF spectrum for the delivery of broadcasting content, be it either using broadcasting technology or mobile-based technology, then, in principle, it could be a good starting point for the further uh, negotiations on spectrum requirements. We, as broadcasters, can provide a very efficient mode of delivering broadcast content to a wide audience with high-power, wide-coverage broadcast transmitters. And on the other side, the mobile phone operators can provide the long-tail content very efficiently to the end user. The next step for broadcasting is definitely going to be hybrid. So there are hybrid applications, 
So applications that will draw their sources from different types of networks, broadcast networks and broadband networks. And of course, there are hybrid TV-specific areas and there are hybrid radio-specific areas. Hybrid is very important for television as it allows broadcasters to bring together their linear service offerings, their traditional services, together with the non-linear services, so the on-demand service elements, to create for the consumer a seamless, ubiquitous service experience. Hybrid approach is really good for radio because combining broadcasting and internet you have the interactivity and you have heavy metadata that you can carry to the listeners. And today, in a world of images, it's really important to get this kind of information to the listeners, especially to the young listeners today. The nonlinear elements on demand we know from the internet, so far available only on the PC. And this is coming together now with hyper technology also on the TV screen. I think we're on the verge of the next revolution in television, where television goes from just coming at you a one-way medium to becoming a seamless two-way interactive medium. Imagine picking up your iPad and seeing not only a program guide, but which of your friends are watching right now. And you can click, and on their TV, you can invite them to watch with you. So there's an opportunity for broadcasters to create open APIs, create companion apps, and let thousands of developers turn all of live TV into a new next generation interactive experience. So will the future be a revolution, a whole new experience, or will it be just a few steps further on what we've got now? Maybe for the moment the best thing to do is to say it's going to be a combination of both of them.